Hello, I am Tiffany Pardue, and today is day three of our 21-day prayer journey leading to the 9th of Av. In today's prayer guide, we are focused on regret. Regret is one of those things that sometimes we say, oh, I don't regret it. It made me who I am. And I look back and I learn something from it. And we kind of don't let ourselves feel what regret actually is, is the sadness associated, um, feelings of repentance, disappointment that something happened or we had a missed or lost opportunity because of actions. As believers and followers of Jesus, while we're not under shame and condemnation, as we look, we absolutely should feel feelings of sadness um, and loss when we think about the consequence of sin. And in this case, as we begin reading about what happened to really separate us, Christians and Jews, and cause a very difficult chasm and breach in our relationships, we should feel something. And so this is a journey of letting the Lord get to uh, that place and of posturing our hearts and asking for the Lord to let us identify with what He feels. And so I really appreciate, again, the resources that I shared on day one, the list and the 40 days of repentance and how those authors shared their journey. One of them, when he began writing the list, got to a place where he said, I am going to spend one minute on each of the oppressions on the ninth of Av. And that's what he did. And in that one minute, he let himself feel what he consider what it would feel like to have been there and witnessed it. And as the day continued, um, the oppressions, the atrocities, the things that happened much in the name of Jesus, he began to feel ill. It just, it it wore so much on him um, and went into a really dark place of grief and later discovered that it was identification with the grief of Jesus at what was happening to his people, what had happened to his people, and the state of the relationship of the church with the nation of Israel. So I really appreciated um, that in the 40 days of repentance, um, I think it was the third day, they said that we are blessed to live in an age where we have access to knowledge at our fingertips, but this is a double-edged sword. For with knowledge comes responsibility. And they exhorted us to, as we're reading the list, if anything grabs us to really pause and 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 go back to the entry on the list and, and let it have its way, um, to look at the extra readings associated with it and to see what the Lord wants to say to us there. And so for me, as I read, you I mean you once you get into the second century, you're already feeling um as you discover the church, the early church, the the way it was shaped by the accusations that the early writers, the theologians, um, forefathers had against the Jewish people, the deicide, that they were God killers, murderers of God. And then they they go on um, to justify um, separating themselves and um, making canons and laws, different ways of really separating Christians, even from any association with the Jews. They demonized them completely. And I just think about in Matthew, how Jesus himself said, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And he told Pilate that the only way that he had the ability to do what he was doing was because heaven allowed it. And that it was him following the will of his father Jews did not take Jesus's life. He willingly gave it up for all of us. We know that as the church. Thank you, God. But we need to look back and let and and understand how this happened. And, And for me, I was really surprised to learn that in 306, that it was written that if any cleric or lay person ate with a Jew, that he or she would be kept from communion as a way of correction. So Jesus, who said, every time you gather, do this in remembrance of me. That if you ate with a Jew, even though he ate with Peter after he ate, he cooked him fish. He provided a meal for him. And I just thought, wow, what deception. A doctrine of demons coming right in there. Jesus himself, after he resurrected, ate with a Jew. And it goes on that by the time you get to 
uh, 363, just 60 years later, it is not lawful to receive portions sent from the feasts of Jews or to feast with them. It is not lawful to receive unleavened bread from the Jews. Again, communion itself, nor to be partakers of their impiety. And I just, just that, I'm not even to the heavy slaughtering of Jews yet in the list, you know, which is there and coming and grievous. And, and the prayer today talks about the blood crying out. And we, we talked in day one about the blood that is on the hands of the churches. But this um, division that crept in is really what the Lord has me uh, repenting for today on behalf of the church. And it is my prayer. And, 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 and just I'm giving thanks to, for the Lord, to the Lord for restoring the table. That as we head to Israel or wherever we are located, that we can truly bear the fruit of repentance in our lives by inviting a Jew to the table and restore that breach that happened in the fourth century. So I just bless you this day as you are reading to really do let what we're discovering have its way and ask the Lord how we can bear the fruit of repentance. God bless you as you read the devotion and read the prayer and continue on the journey.